Today I'm going to talk about technology that keeps you moving. Some of you may be reality show fans, and you may recognize the name Ollie Muirs, who is a reality show participant in the UK. And he broke his leg a few years ago and had serious infections on those implants, which a lot of implant um, patients face, whether on knee or hip implants or um, tra uh, trauma joints, rods, so forth. The Selenic Medical Team spun this technology out of UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas, so I'm kind of obl obligated to give you a howdy from Texas. But the infectious disease physician Dave Greenberg reached out to Rajiv Chopra in the Thermal Medicine Interventional Radiology Group there, and they tried to come up with a technology that would fight infections on implants, and that started about five, seven years ago and led to the invention we're going to talk about today. The problem is that metal is a, a nice defensive barrier if bacteria settles on it, and it's easy for biofilm to form on that metal. When the biofilm forms, you have a metal backside that doesn't transmit many of the body's uh, immune system or antibiotics, and then you have this mucus layer on the front that is going to resist the penetration of antibiotics in the body's immune system. So the biofilm formation hinders treatment by the common uh, te techniques. The pain is shared by all parties. Obviously, the patient with knee swelling or pain is going to feel it, but the payers, the physicians, um, the hospitals themselves, when they have infection problems on just a handful of patients, it can affect their reimbursement rates. The total cost of care average for a single knee infection is half a million dollars, and some of these are multiple surgery procedures that lead to amputation. The cascade process for each surgical procedure has about a 35 to 40 percent failure rate of proceeding to the next um, procedure. Prosthetic joint infections are the most common. Uh, there will be about 1.3 million knees, um, uh, artificial knees in the U.S. alone this year. Um, you, you about three, four times that uh, worldwide in the major markets. The standard of care is complex. Starts with antibiotics, then a couple of DARE procedures, revision procedures to amputation. The problem you have is that many of these patients have a significant number of comorbidities. They may be diabetic, they may be obese, they may be former cancer patients, um, they may be on blood thinners. So the problem is the healthcare uh, complications they have that cause the, the infections to linger. The technology I'm going to talk about is an alternating magnetic field device. It's non-invasive, outside the body, and it concentrates energy on the implant surface, which is pretty much by definition where the infection is. Um, we have one patent issued, four other filings underway, and you see at this diagram, heat on the implant, thermal medicine, which the body you know, uses fevers to try to target infections, but we escalate, and we can escalate that temperature up as far as needed to kill that infection. One thing we did not expect to see here was that AMF is synergistic with the standard of care use of antibiotics. Um, this has been demonstrated in vitro, in vivo, across pathogens, gram positive and negative, and across multiple antibiotics. And you see in this diagram, it, it's kind of doubling the effect, but with the log order, it's actually um, 100 times more effective than um, antibiotics alone. The, the clinical and reimbursement model you see here, it's kind of a in or outpatient kind of procedure. Um, if the patient on the table for a knee treatment, it would be a little bit different for hip. They'd lay on the side. For a tibial nail, which is the indication we're going after next, it's also very similar. Um, device is, a, it, we are not targeting a clinical kind of capital asset sale. We're targeting a lease plus reimbursement per procedure time and model. FDA interaction in the U.S. has been quite positive early and often. We've had five um, pre-sub meetings with the FDA, and the, the response has been quite positive. De novo path anticipated. We are filing our uh, first in human feasibility study in the uh, December 4th timeline as their deadline, so if we're off by that for a few days. We'll let you know. We'll blame it on the Thanksgiving holiday, but we are looking at being in, in human patient treatment in the February time period. Um, one thing to be clear on the, the path to market, we do not have a predicate device. However, there's a huge body of knowledge on what alternating magnetic fields do in the human body, thanks to MRI and other treatments. So that, combined with the uh, quite sophisticated um, energy and thermal simulations, has resulted in a, in a reasonably modest 
path to market f through the FDA and then with the CE marks and uh, bodies in uh, Europe. One thing also we've learned recently is that we cannot just create a transducer that can target an implant. We have proven that we can treat, create transducers that target multiple implants with a single number of transducers. You see this uh, histogram over on the right. The core, the core uh, premise here is if you can create a very tightly controlled field on a very complex shape, and a knee implant is about as complex a shape as you can get in the implants in the human body, then you have the ability to target a very um, effective efficacy level with a very controlled safety level. In addition to that, one thing really exciting is that the target temperature determines the range. So at lower temperatures where you're trying to stimulate you know, the body's um, growth cycle and immune system uh, to higher levels where you're actually trying to create um, targeted kill of chronic or, um, or acute infections. And the, the breadth of uh, um, temperature control there varies somewhat, but it can be very tightly controlled at the lower levels. The timeline we're at right now, we are in the process of assembling our first devices for our first in human um, studies after the first of the year. They're going to go in 60601 testing as well as cadaver studies here this fall and into knee clinical trials. We're going to start with cruciate retaining knees, then uh, posterior stabilizing knees, then tibial nails, hips, and so forth. So we have a rapid path progress. And you see various different images there on how the, the field is shaped for the different devices. Really excited to say our first device, and yeah, it kind of looks like RTD2. The first device that will go into 60601 testing is physically being assembled right now and will be uh, sent to 60601 testing, and then another, a second one will be assembled for cadaver testing right now. The, we funded our progress to date with a $1.3 million NIH grant and then an $8.5 million equity investment, including a leading investor, Johnson & Johnson, um, in this fall. Um, our next Series B investment that's targeted about $15 million will be triggered, or at least that conversation will start. The lead investor has verbaled the day we file the IDE, we can start talking about the Series B with $15 million. So about 60% um, of that round is pledged per se, soft pledge, based on the filing of the FDA from our current investors. So we'll be rounding out that. The, the goal of Selenic Medical is to keep you moving, to resist the impact of infections taking out the implant, and to resist the loss of mobility that comes with it. Um, be happy to answer any questions uh, here at the conference. Thanks for your time.